Thank you all for your inspiring words. Before we proceed with our uh, first panel, the panel of the day, it is my great pleasure to invite Mr. Goran Svilanovic, Secretary General of the Regi Regi Regional uh, Cooperation Council, to address our distinguished guests. The Regional Cooperation Council has been tasked to monitor the progress and implementation of the multi-annual action plan and has been uh, greatly involved in the preparation of this summit. Mr. Svilanovic, welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. A very good morning to all of you. I'm so happy to be in Skopje and I'm very much grateful to you, Prime Minister Zaya, for the invitation, but also to everyone who's been working in order to make this happen. We from the Regional Cooperation Council, we have done something, but are very proud of what we have done in order to make this happen. And please understand, there are always living people who are not necessarily prime ministers, not even the f ministers, not even commissioners, not even the former ministers, living people around you who are coming from your cities who have done this. So, so the person who is really behind the whole idea of the multi-annual action plan or regional economic area is your compatriot. Maya, stand up, please. <laughs> Maya Handrická Trendafilova is the one who is leading the team of others. Pranvera Kastrati is also here. Thank you very much, coming from Tirana. Dragana Djurica could not join us, she's coming from Belgrade. Vanje Vošić is coming from Zagreb, Radovan Nikčević from Podgorica. These are the young people from the region who've invented what the Prime Ministers have agreed in Trieste last year. A notion of regional economic area. This is not against joining the EU, this has to be only a part of the path we need to go through in order to eventually get there. One of the elements of the multi-annual action plan is this digital. We've actually learned from our ministers. There were four of them coming from Belgrade, from Podgorica, from Sarajevo, and of course from Skopje, who have agreed to downsize the prices when it comes to roaming among ourselves. As my cell is in Sarajevo, Regional Cooperation Council in Sarajevo. If I would use the way you use your cell phone, Commissioner Gabriel, in Brussels, I would have to pay 800 euros a month. I cannot afford this. You cannot afford this. If I was using a Montenegrin cell phone, that would be roughly 500 euros, the way you use it in Brussels. So what I'm saying, we have learned that we need to agree among ourselves to downsize the prices. But that's only how we started the whole thinking of the digitalization in the region. But then the others came to us saying, first of all, we need to join, and we hope that we're going to have all-inclusive roaming agreement, which bring together, of course, Albania and Kosovo. And this is what we are working on. But then it's also, again, a part, because Although we have a great result in downsizing the prices among ourselves, what is happening is that, of course, the telecoms are increasing the prices between Belgrade and Vienna, Skopje and Sofia. And there is something that we are highly appreciative of your work. Commissioner Gabriel, there have been several politicians in the region coming from different countries, Europe and outside of Europe, who have done a great job. In spite of the fact that you are very young, You've started, well, for us, uh, recently. You are neck to neck with them because this is not happening every day. That someone who is an official is really investing her political capital and is using an office to make others live better. Therefore, what you've done, I want to explain to the others. Commissioner Gabriel, coming from Sofia, is going to present a roadmap how are we going to downsize, to lower the prices between us and the capitals of the EU? Thank you very much for that work. You deserve an applause. Thank you. There are other elements, because she is now opening some of the programs existing for the EU citizens for non-EU citizens. 
and we are grateful for that as well. So this is where we are. Who helped the process, and I would like to point out the German government and Ost Ausschuss. Vielen Dank. Sehr nett von Ihnen. It was great that they've also joined an effort and been engaged with us, but this would never happen unless European Union, in particular European Commission, supported us. So this is where we are, and we are working on this. This is a big thing. We have never had a leaders, prime ministers gathering to discuss the digital future. As I've started with the figures before I invite the prime ministers and ministers, I would like to offer a few other figures to you. And this is, well, the estimate of how much money we need in order to get where the EU is today. So what is the gap? Is between 1.5 billion and 5 billion euros. And do you know where do we want to be? Well, currently, we have done this survey, Balkan Barometer. We have asked people, do you use internet to get your birth certificate? Nine percent have said yes. So one in 11 is using it. This is something we need to change, and this is why we are working very hard. This is why every support is welcome. So I'm going to challenge first the prime ministers and ministers to tell us what they are currently doing, what they are working on in order to bring us there. Not one in 11, but every second at least to say, yes, I'm using an internet to get my license, to build a house, my birth certificate, or any other document. This is a big and historic moment, and a big host for us is Prime Minister Zoran Zayev. Welcome to the stage. Thank you very much for hosting such a great event. Zoran. Ne znam da li da rečem dobro ste dojdeli, videki to i na mene mora da mi rečem dobro ste dojde gorad. Thank you very much. Please have a seat. And then, uh, of course, I need to invite my co-host because Regional Cooperation Council is in Sarajevo. Therefore, the President of the Council of Ministers, Denis Vizic. Denis, izvolite. Well, many people do know where I was born. Therefore, I would like to invite the Prime Minister of Kosovo, Ramos Karadinaj. Hats. Now, I would like to bring to the stage, well, she has a famous name, but is becoming very famous around for what she is saying and how she is thinking. Sinidia Messi, the Deputy Prime Minister, coming from Tirana. Welcome. So, last but not the least, because when you look at the figures, what the government in Podgorica has done so far is bringing them to a forefront, not only when it comes to the accession process, but in many other areas. Therefore, the Minister of Economy, Dragica Sekulovic. As this is not the RCC show, I will, of course, be very quick in putting you in the context, so to say. And this is, I would really like to invite you dear Prime Ministers, Ministers, to give an answer to a simple question. And this is the question that the people who voted for you are asking regularly. What exactly you are doing, Zoran, in order to bring together your ideas on development of economy in your country? with the digitalization process. I've listened carefully when you mentioned usluge.mk.com and that in 2005 it was a big thing. Where are we today? What is in front of you? Благодарам Горане, благодарам на сите. Наистина е голема чест како што реков на отворањето, но важно е што сите и работиме во тој правец. Република Македонија почна да се горде со дигитална агенда од 2005-2006 година. Продолжија сите влади да работат до денеска. Она која што е наша главна преокупација, како да дојдеме до најмалку 30 секојдневни потреби за услуги на граѓаните, кои што ќе ги добиват преку интернет, директно поврзувајќи се со сите државни институции. Ке кажам неколку. Тоа е одобрението за градба, 
која што е еден од најважните документи и за расти и развој на секоја економија, така и во нашата економија. Сакаме имотниот лист да го вадиме директно преку интернет. Сакаме исто така да, како што рековте, извод од матичната книга на родените да можеме да извадиме преку интернет. Сакаме директно преку интернет да ги видиме сите слободни земеделски парцели кои што можеме да ги понудиме на граѓаните и така натаму. Но многу е важно да интернет технологијата буквално стане наше секојдневие од она што значи трошење на време на нашите граѓани, чекајќи пред институциите, пред шалтерите, на секаде за да добијат одредена услуга. И за нас посветеността токму во овој правец не е како тоа ние ќе бидеме инвентивни, туку како веќе измислената топла вода од западниот свет ќе ја имплементираме овде, и како целото тоа ќе помогне во напредувањето на економската агенда на овој дел од Европа, а и на, ов... на поврзаноста на овој дел од Европа со, со Европската унија. Во... во овие области, како што рече и нашиот министр за информатичко обшество и администрација, формиравме и посебен национален совет за ICT, кој што ги координира сите министри со конечна цел целата ова техника, сите овие софтвери кои што ги имаме во државните институции, да ги конектираме меѓу себе, да направиме унисонос во постапката и да имаме сите бенефит од таа работа, заради тоа што низ годините, веројатно и во сите други земи, така и кај нас, секое министерство, секое јавно предпријатие си правело своја агенда, си правело свој начин на дигитализација, а на крајот ќе видите дека постои една цела лепеза на разноликост, која што никако не можете да ја поврзате. Во моментот сме во изградба на унисоно дигитално постапување од страна на државните институции во една заедничка координација, каде што Националниот совет има за цел, колку што е можно побрзо, целото тоа да го поврза, за да можеме да секако направиме бенефит за оние на кои што им служиме. Како што рековте, нашите граѓани, тие што не гласале, што ни дават подршка, но пред се и над се, оние кои што очекуват да го подобриме квалитетот на нивниот живот. Јас верувам дека ќе успееме во тоа. Силна мотивација за нас е и тоа што го работи Еврокомесарката, преговарајќи со а, телеком операторите на овој регион, преговарајќи со државните институции, кои што се регулатори точно на телеком услугите или слично. Целата ова работа, јас верувам дека Западниот Балкан, ке може да унапреди, како што и досега е пример на соработка. Верувам дека ќе видеме добар пример и на соработка во дигиталната тема. Прем министер, ја менешен операторите. Ви хе хрд фрон министер Манчевски обао да регулатори бодис и фрон комисија Габриел. И ви хе ово хрд да ворд мани. Со, ај да ја 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 and they are ready to work with us to bring on board VIP Austria, Vodafone, it's relevant for Albania, uh, New Telenor. They would like to work because, you know, if someone is winning money, someone is losing money. If they are to lose the money, they want to understand and to be part of the process, to be consulted. We are going to do it. We will engage them. But when it comes to the money needed in order for your government to achieve the goals set in this digital agenda, can you share the figure with us? an idea what are we talking about and where this needed support should come from needed support come? financial support ah, ah. parite dobro eve vaka znači prvo je mnogo važno da opredelimo budžetski pari budžetski pari mora da opredelimo za ova ako sakame na vistina da barame i podrška od privatniot sektor od evropska unija od fondoviti ili slično za da pokažeme naša posvetenost Јас ја и охрабровам Еврокомесарката, преговарајќи со телеком операторите, да знаат да искористат дека и ние како држави сме спремни да партиципираме во дисперзијата на загубата што евентуално би ја направиле телеком операторите преку намалување на нивните услуги, што, односно на нивните цени или вкупните суми кои што ги плаќат, не знам, на агенциите за кои што се регулатори во нашата земја, према нашата држава. Целта е бенефитот ќе биде голем. Ако граѓаните полесно се поврзани, 
Ако бизнесите полесно се поврзани, ние тие пари ќе ги надокнадиме некако во нашите буджети. Но ќе го следиме модерниот тренд кој што дигитализацијата го овозможува и буквално а, ќе го фатиме моментот да не каскаме позади за западните земји кои што итат со големи чекори напред. Од тој аспект, јас сум убеден дека она кој што и денеска постои во буджетот на секое министерство, на секое државно предпријатие, ако добро го консолидираме, ако добро го изменаджираме, е добра сума на пари. Но, заедно со Министерот за финанси, ние веќе предвидуваме нови средства, постојано давајќи подршка за дигиталната агенда во Македонија и верувам како ќе имаме се поголеми успеси, така ќе бидеме и се повеќе охрабрени да алоцираме во буджетот уште поголеми средства од ова што и досега го имаме во нашиот буджет. Thank you very much. I did not want to surprise you very much, but I just wanted to be realistic because we need to be aware. We do have a knowledge, this is why I was pointing out the young people from the region who are working on this, but they need also to be supported. I'd like to now turn to Denis Vizic, President of the Council of Ministers. I mean, bringing everyone on board, it is very important for us, and we will continue working there. But could you please share with the colleagues in the audience what you have done so far in this field? How do you see uh, the potentials and the opportunities coming from the SOFIA summit? And later on, there will be a London summit. And in each and every meeting, you're going to be there, and we will be discussing the issues related to digitalization. How do you see the opportunities, and where are you today? Well, <laughs> prije nego nešto kažem sa vašim pitanjem, u istinu bih želio iskoristiti priliku da u moje ime i ime Bosne i Hercegovine čestitam mojim kolegama, dragim prijateljima, najavo otvaranja poglavlja za Makedoniju i Albaniju kao i ukuprog napretka zemalja Zapadnog Balkana. Uvijek nas raduje kada naše susjedne zemlje napreduju ka Evropskoj uniji. Vaš uspjeh mi smatramo i našim uspjehom, jer područje Zapadnog Balkana je kao jedno područje koje dijeli rijeka. Ta rijeka je evropska perspektiva. Na jednoj strani je prošlost u kojoj, nažalost, još mnogi žive i o kojoj samo pričaju, a na drugoj strani te rijeke jeste Evropska unija, perspektiva, budućnost, i konačno nova digitalna era o kojoj govorimo. Zbog toga treba praviti mostove, da pređemo tu rijeku i da se okrenemo budućnosti. Ja mislim da će to uraditi mladi ljudi, između ostalog i ovi koje ste spomenuli, jer mladim ljudima pripada i digitalna era i ukupna budućnost zemalja Zapadnog Balkana. Ono što je u ovome trenutku najvažnije za nas je Na prostoru Zapadnog Balkana su dvije stvari. Dakle, prva je evropska perspektiva, kao najmanji zajednički nazivnik koji drži ukupnu energiju Zapadnog Balkana i usmjerava je u pravom pravcu. Današnji samit je izvanredan primjer o čemu trebamo govoriti na prostoru Zapadnog Balkana, ali ako napravite analizu medija u poslednjih nekoliko mjeseci, vidjet ćete da je sve manje ovakvih, a sve više onih tema koje stvaraju nove, nažalost, nove tenzije. I druga važna stvar je da mi razumijemo prostor i vrijeme u kojem se nalazimo, posebno Zapadni Balkan. Dakle, najveći nedostatak Zapadnog Balkana je pitanje ukupne infrastrukturne povezanosti. Mi danas govorimo o digitalnoj, ali ukupna povezanost podrazumijeva i transportnu, i energetsku, i konačno digitalnu. Svijet se u zadnjih deset godina mijenja rapidnom brzinom. Dakle, u historiji ljudske civilizacije postojale su tri ključna perioda. Period poljoprivredne revolucije, koji je praktično trajao više od hiljadu godina. Period industrijske revolucije, koji je počeo 1850. i malo ranije u Engleskoj i konačnog periodu informatičke revolucije. 
Svi rani periodi su naprijedili civilizaciju, ali to je trebalo čitav niz godina, desetine i stotine godina. Najvažniji aspekt industrijske revolucije je upravo bio transport, prvo transport željeznicom, pa brodovima i tako dalje, koji je omogućio promet roba, ljudi i kapitala, ali trajalo je 150 godina da se u stvari na neki način ljudi konektuju i povežu. Danas na svijetu živi više od 7,5 milijardi ljudi, preko 3,5 milijarde živi u gradovima i informatička revolucija je porasla 10 puta u zadnjih 10 godina. U periodu od 2012. do 2016. broj internet korisnika je u Evropi porastao za 100 miliona, Sjevernoj Americi 50, u Aziji 750 u Africi 230 miliona. Dakle, to je ona populacija između 15 i 35 godina. Na Zapadnom Balkanu imamo dobre trendove. Ono što je prosječni rast u Evropi korisnika interneta i pametnih telefona negdje oko 2,6% na godišnjem nivou, na Balkanu je 18%. To znači da postajemo svjesni važnosti digitalizacije ukupnog društva, posebno digitalizacije u sferi obrazovanja, ne samo na fakultetima, nego od osnovne srednje škole do fakulteta, digitalnog obrazovanja u vladama, digitalnog obrazovanja u kompanijama i naravno uskladživanja svih naših procesa sa savremenim tokovima. Mi moramo priznati da danas je svijet u potpunosti globaliziran, da roba koja je proizvedena na jednom kraju svijeta samo za nekoliko sati može stići na drugi kraj svijeta, prije je za to trebalo 12 ili 16 mjeseci. Sve skupa je značajno, kvalitativno i kvantitativno ubrzano i mi moramo biti dio toga. Ono što mene raduje su dvije stvari. Prvo izjava uvažene komesarke da će postojati fondovi koji će unaprijediti infrastrukturu, digitalnu infrastrukturu na prostoru Zapadnog Balkana i fondovi koji će nam omogućiti dalji razvoj i edukaciju kadrova u toj oblasti. Mi to ne možemo uraditi sami, ali je jako važno da smo spremni da nastupamo integralno, ne kao pojedinačne zemlje, nego kao jedan integrirani prostor od skoro 20 miliona stanovnika koji može ponuditi puno različitih opcija, puno različitih biznis prilika na našem prostoru i unaprijediti ukupno evropsko i regionalno gospodarstvo. Dakle, to je izuzetno važna stvar. I druga upravo jeste ova naša spremnost da se stalno susrećemo, da razmjenjujemo iskustva i da usmjeravamo procese u pravom svijetu u pravom smjeru, prilagođavajući se onome što se dešava u Evropskoj uniji. Uvaženi ministar je rekao da mi zaostajemo za Evropskom unijom, to je potpuno jasno u vrijeme dok je internet počeo da značajno raste, za to vrijeme, nažalost, mi smo imali ratove na području Zapadnog Balkana 90. godina prošlog stoljeća, što znači da mi moramo raditi pet, šest ili deset puta brže da bi uhvatili korak sa onim što se dešava na prostoru Evropske unije i u istinu u tome nam treba pomoć. Mi svi radimo na strategijama, na strategiji široko pojasnog interneta, na naravno smanjivanju cijena rominga, radimo na prelazku sa analognog na digitalne signale, Ustanovili smo sve potrebne principe funkcioniranja e-vlada ili uopće e-biznisa. Dakle, vrlo smo fokusirani i opredijeljeni da uhvatimo korak sa onim što se dešava u Evropskoj uniji, ali za to nam treba prenos znanja i iskustava, trebaju nam fondovi, trebaju nam investicije i u konačnici... Treba nam ambijent koji će omogućiti da educirani mladi ljudi koji steknu takva znanja i vještine i koji treba da budu lideri procesa digitalizacije i razvoja naših zemalja, 
ostanu u našim zemljama, a ne da idu van prostora Zapadnog Balkana. Dakle, generalno svijet se mijenja, ima jedan podatak koji kaže kada bi čitav svijet bio selo od stotinu ljudi, onda devet osoba ne bi imalo pristup čistoj pitkoj vodi, 18 ne bi imalo električnu energiju, 24 ne bi imalo sobstveni dom, ali 75 bi koristilo mobitel i 52 bi koristilo internet. To su dakle podaci koji govore o razvoju i snazi digitalne informatičke revolucije koje mi svjedočimo. Ona ima pozitivne aspekte. Industrijska revolucija je dovela do razvoja industrije, do stvaranja profita, do konzumerskog društva, ali do snažnog pada kvaliteta života ljudi, posebno u gradovima. Informatička revolucija je nadgradnja. Ona dovodi do novog ekonomskog uspjeha, ali isto tako do unapređenja kvaliteta ljudi, formiranja pametnih vlada, pametnih gradova i pametnih država. Dug je to proces, ali želim da kažem da smo u ime Bosne i Hercegovine, tu je zajedno sa mnom i moj kolega, član vijeće ministara, uvaženi ministar prometa i komunikacija, gospodin Jusko, dakle vrlo smo posvećeni svim zadacima sa digitalne agende, sve strategije su spremne, vrlo aktivno radimo na svim ovim procesima, od široko pojasnog pristupa pa do uvođenja 4G mreže, omogućavanja elektronskog poslovanja i start-up kompanijama, firmama, uopće porezki sistem koji će preći na e-poslovanje, ali i dalje nam trebaju dvije stvari. Dakle, živa evropska perspektiva koja je najmanji zajednički sadržilac svih naših napora i naravno novi fondovi kojima ćemo stalno stimulisati pozitivnu energiju, evropsku energiju, održati pozitivan momentum koji je u ovome trenutku još uvijek postoji na prostoru Zapadnog Balkana. Prime Minister, I would like to pick on one of the points you've shared with us and this is that there is a potential, the youth, the in the region who we should keep and engage in this. Let me tell you, the head of IT security of the OSCE is Sasha from Sarajevo. The head for the digitalization in UNDP Ramos is coming from Pristina, Laura. She's 2032. And the head in the UN for innovative technologies is your nickname, Dragica from Podgorica. I want you to know that they are already there highly respected, highly paid, and are doing a great job. So, now I'm turning to the Prime Minister Haradinaj. As this was clear from what we have heard from the two previous Prime Ministers, there is a lot to do at home. So, what exactly is your agenda before we go and work with the others around? Thank you, Goran. And Allow me as a neighbor here to thank our host first, the Prime Minister Zayu. I think this is a good message coming from our corner, from our region. I want to say that uh, we feel proud of this, uh, how good and uh, how well Republic of Macedonia has done in its, uh, I would say, challenges lately. It's an inspiration for us all around, including for us as Kosovo. Uh, I congratulate as well Albania for its achievement. It was a, a great news for all of us in the region. Uh, f uh, I know Montenegro is in its good direction. So uh, Kosovo and Bosnia uh, have some more work, but here we are to commit ourselves further. Uh, I want as well to say thank you to uh, Commissioner uh, Maria Gabriel, who is uh, uh, leading a very interesting, uh, I would say, commission. It's a digital economy and society. Uh, I want to uh, greet as well the, uh, everybody in the room, but as well the representative of the German government. Thomas Beres, it's nice to have you here. Uh, Berlin process and the engagement of your government uh, gave us more optimism for our European perspective and we welcome that energy and that support for uh, our 
uh, would say, roadmap as, as a region. Digitalization for us it's very important, and I would uh, uh, put only a few words on specifics of my country, Republic of Kosovo. We are the youngest nation, the youngest economy, but as well uh, our population is very young at, as age. And uh, they put us on us a pressure on digitalization. And um, information and communication technology has been a tool uh, to expand, uh, I would say, uh, our, our economic engagement, economic activities uh, larger than just our country. As fortunate for that, you don't need a regime, there is no regime of visa. As Kosovo are still, we don't travel freely. Uh, so this is an opportunity to work uh, with uh, many other economies, with people around not just our continent, but the globe. Uh, internet uh, distribution and access to internet, uh, it's still in process for us. We have to help uh, rural areas and we have to reach uh, all those that, uh, uh, that would be of an immediate need. And that's our schools, that are hospitals, that are private sector, but in remote areas there is still work to be done. Roaming, yes, we want to join the family of uh, us six and hopefully together, as you stated in your uh, opening remarks, uh, all together then uh, to the big family. Uh, the, uh, uh, we have a program that we work with the World Bank, CODE program, but as well as a country, as a government, we are focused on the uh, ICT uh, aspect of, uh, of uh, I would say, economic growth of our country, both sectors, public, private, and uh, we would always welcome the expertise of other nations around us, neighbors and partners, and we want to uh, join the team. So thank you once again for this uh, very important uh, opportunity to be together and to uh, prove our commitment as well uh, as a Western Balkan nations. Thank you, Zayl. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I've entered the doors called the digital several years back. It was in Tirana, actually. And then, what I've learned, they were discussing the urbanization and issuing the digital licenses in order to build houses. And who I met there were the guys coming from Skopje, went to Belgrade and taught them how to do it. And then there were two teams coming from Skopje and Belgrade, coming to Tirana, to work with their colleagues and tell them, this is what we've done, this is what went wrong, please learn from us. So this is how it works in the region. And I just want to say very honestly how it went and what I've learned. I'd like to invite the Deputy Prime Minister Senida Messi. Congratulations. Now I would like to join Denis Vizic to what you have achieved. And we, of course, are hopeful that eventually the EU member states will agree with what the Commission is proposing. Now I'm asking to share with us what your government is doing. What are you doing at home when it comes to bringing bridging this digital divide and the gap between us and them in order for us to become part of the EU in this field as well. Please. Thank you. Let me congratulate even with uh, Premier Zayev uh, at the same time for the yesterday report and thank you, Commissioner, uh, that uh, yeah, both two countries, Albania and Macedonia, already move a step ahead and I wish that even other countries in the Western Balkan uh, will move in the same uh, direction. Um, when we are talking about digital uh, agenda, definitely everybody here mentioning that uh, we are talking about the future. You already put in our minds some uh, figures which, uh, frankly speaking, from an economist point of view, they are quite, uh, quite huge, 1.5 up to 5 uh, billion, billion, billion of euro uh, to be or to become as Europe is now in digital market. But if tomorrow we are investing today uh, to become tomorrow as Europe is today, tomorrow Europe will move again a head further. So we always will be one step uh, behind in the technology. So it's, uh, it's very much important that since now, since today, we think in terms of how to connect better in the digital market together with each other in Western Balkan countries, but in the same time to catch uh, all the innovation that uh, member states of European Union uh, are doing. 
As I see digital agenda, definitely is reshuffling completely the way how we are thinking, the way how we are living, and the way how we are taking decisions, be it in an economical point of view, be it even in a social sphere. But definitely is reshuffling even the way how we are com communicating with our citizens, government to citizens. Citizens already have much more platform to communicate with the government, to take online services, but even uh, to uh, complain and even to have a say in all the possible portals. In the same time, uh, this urges the government to be much more, let's say, confident, responsible, and uh, definitely much more transparent, because everything now is almost it's, um, it's online. So this is somehow uh, putting us into uh, a mirror in front of our uh, citizens, simply to do better, to do better for them. When we are talking about accessibility, let me uh, mention here that uh, yesterday I do believe that Albanian government officially signed uh, the, the letter where it is expressing the desire to enter in the joint uh, agreement, in roaming agreement in the Western Balkan countries. Uh, I do believe that Kosovo did, uh, did the same as we are the last, uh, let's say, two countries that aren't part of this uh, regional uh, agreement. But we already did a lot because we decreased uh, the tariffs in roaming and as soon as we, we saw this, uh, so we already are part of this, uh, let's say, agreement because the roaming tariffs are already in the same uh, line as the condition of this agreement uh, uh, actually is, let's say, uh, putting. So we are waiting for the, the, the countries that uh, already are member of this agreement to add this annex for Kosovo and uh, Albania too to be part of this roaming, uh, roaming uh, agreement with lower, lower tariffs. We are talking now with lowering tariffs. Meanwhile, since one year, if I'm not mistaken, Europe already uh, take out completely the, the roaming tariffs. So we are two steps behind, so we need to go further with lowering our tariffs internally with the Western Balkan countries first. Secondly, as uh, Commissioner Gabriel already mentioned with the strategy that we have, let's say, diminished tariffs Western Balkan countries and Europe, to go then in the near future with the same uh, tariffs or no tariffs as the European Union is having now. Meanwhile, what Albanian government is doing in terms of uh, digital agenda and uh, innovation, one of the five priorities that uh, this government mandate has already established are a public service uh, reform and public service deliver. Out of 1,300 public services offered in the central level, 500, uh, more than 500 of uh, services are offered through online portals. Um, E-governance, it's actually under the national uh, agency for innovation and technology through e-Albania portal. The e-Albania portal is already having more than 500 users and more than 25 million of transactions done in a year. I'm happy to announce here that uh, for the time being in Albania, there is no any possibility to take a birth certificate or a familiar certificate only 100% online. Uh, in Albania, was, uh, I don't know in other countries, but uh, out of uh, 3 million of inhabitants, there were 4.5 million of certificates generated year after year. Actually, the only way that you can take a certificate, a birth certificate, family certificate, it's only via online. And not directly uh, from the citizen, which is one, uh, one way, but we transfer this uh, right to the institution that they need this kind of birth certificate for their dossier to prepare, let's say, kind of documents and to offer public services. So with the consent from the citizen, uh, uh, each institution that needs to take out this birth certificate for their internal, let's say, procedure has the right to generate this automatically with the citizen consent. Uh, giving the right to the public administrators that already are trained for this purpose to really attract this kind of um, information. Uh, ba uh, balance sheets of the businesses are already uploaded in the system. So already with the businesses we've moved a lot. E-permission, for example, is one uh, success story. Still, they need to be improved some steps internally from the procedure-wise. But from legal point of view, and everything is done only online. And the key of success in Albania in this reform was exactly then when we established uh, the online procedures, 
we take it out of the paper procedure because we observe that once we keep it both paper and online, people tended to go again with, uh, with paper. And then we said, okay, if we want to go paperless, then in the same decision that we are saying this the transaction should be offered only online and no paper. And then we saw the, the results. In terms of health, let me make uh, another, point, uh, another point that uh, for me, if we are talking about digital market and how this is affecting society per se, uh, is what we are going to do even for elderly person and uh, in, uh, in e-health. And according to all the statistics that we are having actually, the only way you can take uh, uh, e-card, a health card, uh, uh, e-health e card, so it's a health card, it's only via electronic system. The only way that uh, now you take a prescription, medical prescription, it's an e-prescription. So this already not simply improved the lives of the people, diminished and decreased the, the, the waiting uh, <coughs> time and uh, much more, let's say, it's a much more effective way how you com com communicate with people. What's important for Albanian government is always to see what we can do digitally and innovation in terms of citizen-centric and how this can improve the life of citizens and improve and save time of the business. Well, life of citizens was the point made by Minister Manchinski. Look, listening carefully, carefully to what you've said, I think you should go to the advanced class, and advanced class is ministers dealing with digitalization. <laughs> it's, and I'm very sorry that Anna Brnovic did not join us this morning because you too would have a great talk because she is really a driving engine in Serbia, but she's joining us for the dinner so you can have this conversation. Speaking about front runners, as I've mentioned, my country and my prime minister, I'm turning to Dragica as you are the front runner when it comes to accession negotiation to Yerevan Serbia, but are you ready to be a front runner when it comes to digitalization as well? Share with us. Uh, I hope so. First of all, I have to, to thank you for the uh, invitation for this great uh, event and, and to, to, to congratulate for the organization of this great event for the first time. When we are talking about Montenegro, I have to divide my, my, my talks in two rows. One is what we are doing uh, by using of digital skills and digitalization for our citizens. And that's something which should be the, the first, let's say, goal of all of us. And what I read last few days is actually that our clinical center, for example, in cooperation with one of the operators, telecommunication operators, are doing everything online by scheduling, by uh, sending of uh, uh, putting the results. And our citizens are very, let's say, happy. And, and uh, uh, that's something which do not need some kind of, uh, let's say, huge effort but giving a huge results to our citizens. And that's the first goal, to use as much as we can of digital uh, 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 and online platforms for our citizens. We are already doing it with Catastro, with getting of the uh, uh, lists of uh, ownership. We are doing that with a lot of documents, but that's not enough. The only way in which we can talk about regional development, decentralization of all the the public services, it's the digital. The digital is the key. How we can do this decentralization of, of uh, our cities, our services, and the regional cooperation on a level of the country. When we are talking about the, the, the government, all of our activities are, let's say, paperless. All of the sessions, all the prepara uh, preparations, all the committees, and all the the, the conclusions are only given in a, in a, in a digital way with the digital certificates and, and signatures. So I believe that a few years uh, ago we already, let's say, are used on that. That's something which we need to put on a level of the companies. We are now doing a lot in the e-procurement, fiscalization, all of the uh, uh, putting uh, uh, licenses in the, in the uh, uh, digital manner. So that's something on which we are focusing right now because we believe, as your study showed, actually that as much as we uh, increase the, the digital index, the, 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 the revenue, the profit of the companies will go up and the uh, GDP of our country uh, will go up. When we are talking about uh, telecommunication, 
by, for example, by the last white book of the Council of the Foreign Investors in Montenegro, it shows that ICT and telecommunication sector is the most uh, efficient and favorable sector for investment in, in Montenegro, which gives, uh, uh, let's say, a great, uh, uh, great uh, um, advantage for us as, as the government because it shows that actually the investors recognizes that uh, uh, we are very open in these, these uh, two sectors. We have a great cooperation with all the operators. Uh, I have to mention that uh, all of our countries, but I have to, to talk about Montenegro, uh, is a touristic uh, destination for us. The roaming prices, the, the cooperation between the operators and the countries, especially on a regional level, is of high of interest. Because yesterday I was traveling by car from Podgorica to, to Skopje, changing, uh, I think, four or five operators. All of them has uh, different prices in, in, uh, in uh, uh, roaming. Uh, in some of the countries, I even didn't have the, the internet possibility. Uh, uh, the, the main, uh, let's say, roads are not covered with uh, even 3G uh, signal. So that's something on which all of us should work. And uh, what we are expecting for this kind of the organization, you know, we are, let's say, we shifted our minds that our investors in telecommunication are not only privatizers. As you remember, 10 or 15 years ago, we were talking that some foreign companies come privatize our, our, our state companies and they are bringing revenues and such kind of things. That was a uh, feeling of, of, the, of the citizens. Nowadays, telecommunication operators are investors in our countries. They are investing, for example, in Montenegro last year, almost 120 million of euros into the, the infrastructure, which is quite a lot for, for uh, Montenegrin conditions. But we cannot expect from them to invest everything. Something needs to be invested in the infrastructure by the governments. And that's something what we are expecting for this kind of the activities, to have a support in the, uh, 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 in, the, in the financing of the infrastructure, which needs to be financed and invested by the government. And of course, we are uh, 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 always keeping to the, to the topic of the downsizing of the prices of the roaming tariffs. Minister Sikulovic, thank you very much. I'd like to express my gratitude to all Prime Minister's ministers, but would like to ask us to stay at the stage. Uh, we were discussing investing. I think Prime Minister Zayev has mentioned budgeting, uh, Prime Minister Zvidic as well. But let us learn from the others what are we to invest in and why? I would like to invite uh, Florian Bieber, University of Graz, and Maruška Wieser, Institute of Economy, Zagreb, to share with us the study they've done. How will digital transformation influence us in the Balkans? Will you please join me and present these results of your study? Please, come on. Come on. Maruška, hello. Florian, please, you have a few minutes, and then you will have an opportunity to reflect what we have learned from them. Please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, your excellencies, it is my pleasure to present to you today the results of the study on uh, economic, social, and political effects of digital transformation in Western Balkan economies. Uh, this study is a joint uh, result of a research project done by the University of Graz and the Institute of Economics Zagreb. It was initiated by the uh, Western Balkans 6 Plus initiative, uh, which is the one who financed the study. Uh, the structure of the study is... 
I have a little bit of a technical problems. Oh, yep. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, the study itself is divided in three parts. The first part is dealing yeah, with well the current right. state of digital transformation. The second part is dealing with economic uh, aspects of digital transformation. It is further subdivided into three, uh, four, uh, sorry, five very, very important uh, subsections. And then the third part on political and social dimensions of digital transformation is uh, subdivided further into four uh, fields. Uh, it, is, it will be available during the coffee break for you to glance through and it is also could be uh, downloaded from the website of the West Balkan 6 Plus initiative. Oops, sorry. Uh, just a briefly about the state of the digital transformation today. Uh, this figure presents the digitalization index that was estimated uh, in the study and presented in the study. And there is good news and bad news. The good news is the all economies in the region are actually, their digitalization level is increasing over time. However, uh, not all economies are doing equally well and should uh, do much more in order to address the gaps. As you are going to see, the gaps are quite substantial. You can see from this figure, uh, with regards to EU averages, there is very much that can be done in order to address various deficiencies. Uh, here we only uh, displayed the basic digital transformation indicators, uh, much advanced digital transformation indicators such as the use of cloud ap applications and uh, customer relationship man management uh, applications and things like that, uh, were not, uh, we, we could not estimate it, but we uh, can assume that these gaps are also quite large and possibly even larger than these gaps in the um, basic digital transformation indicators. Uh, if these economies are to close these gaps, the economic benefits would be very, very substantial. The study shows that 10% increase in the overall digitalization level would increase the GDP by 0.63%. It doesn't sound like much, but given the fact that the economic results in the region are quite stagnating, this can be a lot. Uh, moreover, uh, these effects are much larger for Western Balkan region when compared to the rest of the world, which means that digital transformation has real growth enhancing potential for the region. Um, we also uh, conducted microeconomic analysis, which suggests the following. The overall increase of digitalization by just 1% could increase the productivity in manufacturing firms by 2% and employment in manufacturing firms by 1%. So the effects of digitalization on firm performance is actually quite larger than the effects of digitalization on the overall economy, which means that digitalization is crucial for businesses. One other thing, very important, the digitalization effects in the region are much stronger for technology and knowledge intensive companies and for companies in rural areas. This means the digital transformation could actually be used as an important element in the policy mix aimed at reindustrialization and more balanced regional development of these economies. <laughs> However, Marushka, do you intend to close it by 2020 sorry? or 2025? Speed it up, please. Okay, last slide, sorry. Um, we estimated as a motive for policymakers what 100 million euros investment would do for each of these economies if this 100 million euros is investment invested into broadband infrastructure. For example, in Albania, 100 million euros investment would give 10,000 more new jobs. In Serbia, 8,000 new jobs. In Montenegro and Macedonia, 4,000 new jobs. So this is quite, quite substantial. More importantly, when you invest 100 million euros in broadband infrastructure, 
you, the government actually has new budgetary revenues which are induced through these investments. These budgetary revenues range from 15 million in Macedonia to 45 million in Serbia. This suggests that even if you use public money to finance broadband infrastructure projects, part, a substantial part of these projects are actually self-financed through the extra budgetary income induced by broadband infrastructure investments. I will now give the floor to Florian Bieber, who is going to present the rest of the results. Florian, show us how you Thank do you. it in the EU, quickly. I'll be quite quick. I think the key points I would like to make is about the, um, the, the recommendations we come up with. Because the, the key elements uh, we are observing is, and some of them have been already mentioned, but I would like to emphasize a few, a few points. First of all, we haven't made the link to the EU integration process of the countries of the region strongly enough. I think one of the key elements is that the digital transformation is going to come no matter what. It is coming already. It is whether people are designing websites in Veles to impact uh, political elections elsewhere or whether they are startups uh, in the region. So what we are looking at is about harnessing the digital transformation. And basically, one of the key observations we note is that this opportunity is also about enhancing EU integration of the region because it can do a few things. It can improve regional cooperation, it can cut down on what the European Commission uh, strategy from February has called elements of state capture. It can reduce corruption substantially. So we've talked about e-government a lot, but one of the re key reasons of advancing it and uh, enhancing it is exactly to reduce the opportunities for corruption, which again can move the countries much quicker to the European Union. Now, the key points we're making is that basically what we need is cooperation, regulation improvements, education, preparation and support. So what, I'm t what we're talking about is enhancing regional cooperation when it comes to permanent working groups on digital transformation. Not every country by itself, but working as a region, uh, as, uh, the, as the economies jointly. The other element is to also work on interoperability so that citizens can transfer, can move between the economies to share good practices, to share good experiences across the region. To improve regulation, what we're talking about is exactly improving the ability to roll out the digital infrastructure to make it possible that 4G is available throughout the region when you're driving on the roads. And that often is hindered by regulation. When we're talking about education, we're talking about the issue of preparing citizens for these opportunities, retraining, rolling out more effectively uh, in, uh, internet and uh, digital uh, skills uh, throughout, uh, throughout the educational system. When we're talking about preparation, we're talking about preparing SMEs for the digital challenges, to allow them also to trade across borders, which they're often not able to do due to low trust and low skills and abilities. And finally, we're talking about support, support in terms of EU support for the region, and basically what we're arguing is we have to think of the region as being in the European Union, full inclusion in the, in the digital market already, roaming we've mentioned already in many ways, which I think is essential, so basically bringing the region into the digital Europe as well, and and I will conclude with that, the idea of digital mainstreaming. Not thinking of the digital as something we do also, but as something which should kind of go across all elements of social, political, government, economic policies uh, in the region. And that can then be the transformative effect which the digital side can develop. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Florian. What we have learned. If I was asked in a class what you have learned, I'd be able to say, in the last 10 years, 1.8%, so almost 2% of the GDP growth came from digitalization. That's great, because the second message was employment, more new jobs are coming through digitalization. And the third point, this is a very good tool to prevent corruption. These people are voted in to bring jobs, to increase the GDP, and to fight corruption. So I'd like to invite now Prime Minister Zayev, you to say what you have learned from this and actually to help us somehow close this first panel as the first host 
of the first digital summit in the Balkans ever. Next one in Belgrade, next one in, after Belgrade? Maybe in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Prime Minister. Dobro, nema na vistina považna tema koja što može tako da ne sobere zajedno. Digitalnata ekonomija, digitalizacijata, tehnološkijot razvoje, nešto koja što se koji što ke se obide da go spreče, samo ke bide pregazen, jednostavno mora da se podgotvime site, biznisite, vladite, građanite, da go pregrneme i bukvalno da go podržime, zaradi toa što rekov te otvara mnogo rabotni mesta, e akselerator na pokačuvanje to na se vkupnite prihodi i na biznisite, no i za građanite vo delot na platite. Digitalizacijata i tehnološki odrazvoj na vistina se nešto koja što toliko silno doaja, što koliko pobrzo nije vladiti ke se podgotvime. Za da možeme da gi nasočime, fokusirame točno kon našite potrebi, toliko i našite ekonomiji i našite građani ki bidat popodgotveni. Ja sam ubeden vo toa. Zapaden Balkan so rabotova na mnogu polinja. Едно од тие полиња е дигиталната агенда. И мене ме радува многу што дигиталниот самит е причина овде во Скопје да се собереме сите. Многу што имаме да научиме. Ја знам дека веќе постојат многу убави без практиц, убави примери. Ние можеме да споделиме од Македонија се што имаме до сега научено, но можеме да примиме се што имат позитивна пракса нашите соседи, сите заедно да примиме од Европа, Но целта е да учиме брзо, целта е да го споделуваме тоа со нас и целта е регионално да го правиме. Затоа што ако го правиме регионално, толку и повеќе ќе бидеме почитувани од западниот дел на Европската унија. Овој дигитален самит јас верувам дека ќе дигне свесноста на целиот овој регион. Во мојата Македонија сигурен сум дека тоа ќе се случи, а ќе биде сигурно и сериозна причина за мене, министрите од владата кои што голем дел се овде присутни денеска, да бидат фокусирани и во своите ресори, но и во финансиско обезбедување на подршка на се што значи информатички технологии и дигитализација на нашето секојдневие. Така да се надевам дека првата сесија, токму со нас, премиерите, подпредседателите на влади и министрите, овде ќе бидат сериозна мотивација за компаниите, за сите други партиципиенти, граѓанските организации и други кои што ќе учествуваат во овие два дена убави посветени на дигитализацијата на нашиот регион. Благодарам. Почитувам премиер, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Please join me in sharing an applause to the prime ministers. Thank you very much.